this is a short video to uh, demonstrate the um, features of the Eclipse iSpec 2200 CMM application. Just to give you a general idea about actually what functions it's got, um, not in any detail at this point, how it works in general, um, and one or two other small things about it. There are other videos in this series which show you in more detail other areas of the application. The application provides a, a very good editing and output application which enables you to do um, iSpec 2200 component maintenance manuals, an abbreviated component maintenance manual, and service bulletins. One of the, the, the feature, really, one of the main features of this application is that it actually it gives you very tight control of various items, for example, publication issues, which is so important in aircraft publications, task types, um, the information identification using the codes, and the output formatting. What it also provides is a high quality printed output, or you can do it to a PDF file, and it keeps contents lists, indexes, and IPL numerical and other indexes, and they generate it automatically within the application. This is a FrameMaker structured application, um, and what happens is that you can accept compliant HTML files of the various types that you can actually accept. It works in structured FrameMaker. You can export a complete HTML file if that's what you want, but most of our clients are contracted to provide hard copy only. You can configure it to author ATA documents of the type CMM versions 2 to 12, ACMM versions 2 to 12, and service bulletins issued at versions 5 to 9. The application provides um, empty CMM, ACMM, and service bulletin HTML files so that you can start a project. And when you open the HTML CMM file or one of the others, it's processed automatically to produce all the necessary page blocks. Having created those page blocks, um, unwanted ones can be removed if that's what you want to do, or you can have extra page blocks added. So when you open the HTML file, um, it, the system automatically starts creating the various page blocks that you need. Um, and they're converted, the page blocks are actually contained within the HTML file, and they're converted into individual structured FrameMaker files. What we're going to do now is to have a look at the opening of a typical HTML file and we're going to be choosing a CMM for this to demonstrate how it works. What we're going to do is to open up an, an, an existing template, if you like. It's an, an empty ATA HTML file and we're going to create the CMM from that. So what we do is to go new and go across to CMM and we're going to pick uh, version 12. That's the latest one, and open. What the application does now is to um, open that file. Let me move it slightly sideways there. And we're asked to save the file. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, we'll save it in the place uh, that we can find it again. Um, and ATA, uh, short videos, and I've created a folder so that we can put the CMM into there. And we're going to call it CMM, and we're going to call it a book. So there we are, it's a CMM book, and by saving that now, the process starts again. And if we look at the log console, um, move it across a bit more, you can see that it's working on what's happening here. Now in a moment or two, we're going to be asked to um, say what template we want to attach to it. Here we are, here's the template window. Um, I'm going to select Mecon and uh, away it goes and carries on now and it takes all the basic facts which are located in the Mecon folder, uh, the Mecon template, uh, and it will now apply those to all the various page blocks that we have there. Now you can see it's actually processing the files in turn um, and then it actually does really oh, finish the import um, and you can see it's still processing things because of what we're seeing in the bottom left hand corner here and now um, it starts to process the book components completely and that's an overall process it doesn't take very long um, this is empty of course so if, if you're importing an existing ATA um, file then obviously it's going to be take a lot longer than this so it's come up now and it's actually said to us uh, very important please save the book file so what we're going to do now is just to highlight the book file there and click on that 
and now we've got here in this left hand window all of the all of the page blocks that's been create, created and these are the page block these are the file names um, and if we click on that little bit there in the little icon what you see happens now is that actually it goes away and gets all the all the page block titles so those are the page block titles you can see there so you can see here on this slide the uh, left hand side there are all the page blocks that have been created and they've been created because we've opened up an SGML file which is in accordance with um, ATA uh, ISPEC 2200. Now those are the page blocks and this is how the whole thing is saved and the editing of the content is done purely in Structured Frame Maker using each one of these page blocks as appropriate and each of the page blocks is a page maker file, a frame maker file but the thing about it is that it, everything is tightly controlled um, in terms of chapter numbers, um, numbers to do with the, the dates and things like that and we'll have a look in a moment to see uh, what we have to do there. So following on then from our last short video um, you'll see that uh, we've got all the items here that have been created from that list. So we've got the front, uh, we've got the title page, um, if we go back to the uh, file names you can see what it says the title page uh, the transmittal list uh, list of service bulletins now when you create the book later on extra files will be created automatically from this but for the moment let's go back to the file names so each one of these um, items here um, is actually a page block in the system so if I uh, just double click on that in the right hand window here you'll see we've got some token text and what we've got then is, is the system here whereby we've got the task number. This is all generated automatically for you. Um, that's the title there. And you can add whatever it is you want in there. Now there are some things that we need to be looked at and we'll be looking at those later. There are five different types of task. Um, and the spec says that you should actually have um, just one type of task in the book. Um, however, uh, Various companies have changed the way they want to work, and um, so we, we've had to accommodate that. So, in fact, you can have, have a whole book at one task type, uh, page blocks at different task types, or even you can now, now have um, different task types within a page block, which is not strictly speaking in accordance with the specification, but our clients actually want that to be there. So let's, uh, these, uh, this is the outline text. Uh, one of the areas where we give you some outline text to start with, if I open up the illustrated parts list, um, you can see it's got some token text in there. Um, people, our clients change this to suit themselves, but what we've got in here is, if you like, the minimum that you need to have to work. The, uh, we can move it across a bit further so we can see what's going on. Uh, now you can see it says Mika on the top there. That's because we have got the, um, we we asked for the Mecon uh, template to start with. So we've got all this, uh, you know, these are the standard uh, phrases that are used. Uh, and eventually we come to, that's a token a picture there. Um, and then we come to uh, a parts list, which is really nothing special at all. Uh, so we've got the token stuff in there. Uh, and we'll look at each one of these bits uh, a bit later on in the videos as we come to them. What we have here is the uh, beginning of the preferences tabs and we're looking at uh, the configuration of the style and as you can see some of the configuration is carried out by this preferences window, and this is the display style and you can see things like uh, the document style, the document uh, form style, date form style uh, there's also uh, other areas in there, graphic type uh, and that sort of thing. This enables you to set it up um, in the way that you want it to be set up we provide, um, as far as the structure is concerned, we provide Airbus and Boeing. Um, it is possible for you to create your own styles, should you so wish. You may remember earlier on in this video that we said that actually things were very tightly controlled when it came to revisions and stuff like that. The only way that you can put issue dates in, uh, or revision dates, is through this revision tab on the Preferences window. You put in the date that you wish to put it in, um, and uh, 
then you uh, once you've set that in there then that date is retained all the time um, and it is important it, it actually sets up various standard bits and pieces through through the actual working with it so that the revision date the revision number uh, and everything like that is very closely controlled those of you who are familiar with um, the ATA specification will perhaps remember that the page blocks contain tasks and the spec says that there are five different sorts of tasks and the way it's presented um, you each uh, element has its own function and there are some slight differences in the function what the specification says is that you should really stick with one task type all the way through the publication but of course um, there are manufacturers who don't like that and for a number of years we had one we had uh, a requirement where we had uh, each book had its own type uh, and then later on we just we were presented with the problem of uh, providing a different uh, task type um, in each uh, page block um, and then inevitably somebody came along and said oh, well what we want to be able to do is to change task types inside each page block so this is what we've got here and if you look at this area at the bottom you can see that in fact we've got that ability there so we've got five task types and a mixed task type the mixed one enables you to switch from one task type to another on the way through the page block the way we've organized it is if you selected a task type and you get the structure slightly wrong then uh, the items that are wrong are flagged up in red so having shown the on the slide what we're going to do is to actually sort of show you now in live form if you like um, the various parts that we're going to look at what we're going to do is, first of all is to look at the style I've already pre-selected Airbus the date format is going to be ATA because it's a standard way of doing it title page is going to be Airbus um, the LEP layout two columns graphic style Airbus uh, IPL position you can have that uh, in, either in the pagination order which would put it halfway up uh, because it, it, it's a the it's actually a, a, a page block 10 so it, it, it would there be sort of part halfway up something like that so we're going to have that there and so we're going to do that that's okay now for the revision what we're going to do is to I, you can see I've already added in a revision date there what I'm going to do is to actually delete that that way we only this is the first date but once we've later on we're given the option to create a file which makes absolutely sure that nothing gets moved and no issues get removed or anything like that so um, once we've created that file it would be impossible to remove a revision date from the book um, page block uh, page block style is going to be enhanced structure well we're going to have to allow ourselves to have a mixed structure and we're going to show the MTOS numbers um, repair blocks restart the page numbering um, repair block in our folder uh, task figure numbering restart so if I now click on OK it will now apply those that information that I've given to the book and you can see if uh, a log console turns up and it goes through and it updates the variables this is the feedback that you get it's disconnected now so it's complete what it was going to do that's the end of this short video which has introduced you to the concept of actually how the application works um, some areas that you can actually change quite easily like for example the templates you can change some of the structures um, and the some of the preferences that you've got other videos in this group uh, will be looking at things like uh, how you change the template uh, some configuration options and things like that